In this tutorial, we're going to create this very simple random name generator app. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central, and in this video, we're going to make this random name generator app. But instead of doing all of the work on the front end and just picking some random data out of an array or an object, we're actually going to create this as a full stack app. And this video is kind of a bit of a crossover for us, as this actually came from a viewer's question on a particular video that we did a little while ago, which is to learn to code a JavaScript random name generator. And this comment came from KB, who said it'd be really good if you could go through how to load the data from a file or an API. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to create a back end that actually loads in some data from a JSON file and then serves it up via an API, which we can then finally use on our front end. So it might be a little bit overkill just for creating a random name, but you can use the principles that we're going to learn in this tutorial to apply to many different areas, including loading in data from files, serving up data from an API, and then consuming it in your front end application. So let's get started by setting our app up. So in the terminal, I'm just going to make a new directory and we call it random name app, for example, and let's just navigate into that app. And let's open up Visual Studio Code where we'll be writing our code into the application. And the first thing I'm going to do is just initialize this with npm n init, and that will create a package.json file for us. Uh, we'll need that a little bit later on because we're going to be loading in some dependencies for our application. And the npm init just does the job of setting that up for us. So the first component of our application is going to be that data, which is going to be a list of names which we'll pick at random to then serve via our API. So we'll need some names from somewhere, and what I'm going to actually use is a tool called Mockaroo. And you can find that at mockaroo.com. And you can use Mockaroo to generate lots of different types of random data for users or for anything to put into your databases. But all we need here is some random first names and last names. So I'm going to get rid of the ID, email, gender, and IP address fields. And I'm going to download this as a data file. And it'd be really handy if we had it in JSON already. So I'm going to choose that as the option. And then I'm going to click download, which you see gives us this mock data.json file. So let's actually copy that into our application folder. And if we take a look at that data file, you can see there's simply an array that has lots of objects inside with a first name and last name prop property, and they're basically just random names. So we could just actually serve up these individually, or we could pick a random item from the array and pick the first name out and then choose another random item from the array and pick the last name. So that will really make our results that we serve to the user totally random from this list. So let's start creating our app file. And the way we can actually load in that JSON data is just to use a simple require statement and store it into a variable. So if we say our data is equal to require, and then if we put, just put the relative path to mockdata.json, and if we were to just test that out and just console.log the first item in the array out onto the terminal, and then we can run that with node app, you can see the result we get is Kermi Clarkson. And if we look at the JSON file again, you'll see that that's the first item that's in our array. But of course, we don't just want to log that data onto the console within Node. We actually want to serve that up via our API. So I'm going to use Express for the API. And instead of generating a full-blown Express application, I'm just going to require Express as a dependency. And I do that just by saying npm install and then Express. And you'll see that that's actually added it to our package.json file for us as a dependency. And so we can now use that within our app file. So let's just load that in here as well. So we can say const express, and we'll use require express. And to create a new express app, we simply call the express function and save that into a variable. So here we've got app is equal to express. And just to show you how simple it is to set up a root in this manner, if we would say app.use, and we'll give a root on our application called random name, and in there, it'll take a callback, which has two parameters itself, which is request and response. And if we were just to go in there and inside that callback, call the JSON function that's on the response object. 
and just pass it back the first item in the array. If we then set our app listening, and you can choose a particular port for it to listen on, I'm going to choose 3000 here, and just have a little bit of output in the console just to let us know that it's running. If we now run our application again, uh, whoops, it looks like I've actually got another application using that port at the moment, so let's choose a different port, let's say 3001. You can see our app is now listening on that particular port number. So if we actually go back to our browser and just try and call that endpoint with forward slash random name. You can see that that first item in the JSON file is actually now returned to us. So now if we were to write an app, we could actually consume data from this random name endpoint, that route that we just set up. But of course it's just sending us back the first item in the array at the moment, so let's actually go and get a random name this time. So the easiest way to do this is just to use the math.random function and then just to multiply it by the actual length of the items in our data array. So we could write something like this. So this statement is basically accessing the data array and accessing the item at a particular index and we're basically getting a random number in between zero and the length of the actual data array and just using math.round there just to make sure that we don't get any fractional numbers. And then we're using an ES6 destructuring syntax to actually just grab the first name out of the object that's returned. So that will just give us a random first name. Let's actually get a random second name in the same way. And now we've actually got a first name and last name saved into those particular variables, we can just reconstruct that as an object and send it back with our res.json statement. Of course, you wanted to change the actual name of the properties that are being sent back, you could do that here, but I'm just going to stick with them as they are at the moment. So now let's run our app again and test it out in the browser. So if I refresh the page, you can see I get a different name this time. And if I keep refreshing the page, you can see that I get a random name, which is actually a random first name and last name from our data array. And I can keep doing that and I'll get completely different results each time. So that's pretty much it for our backend API. We've got a working endpoint that will give us a random name each time we make a request to it. Let's actually create the front end now so that we can actually consume that API and display that information in a bit more of a user friendly manner. So there are a couple of extra things that we actually need to do now to enable Express to allow us to serve some front-end content, and that is basically to set a views folder and set a view engine. Now we're not actually going to be making use of that view engine at the moment, but we actually need to set something. So I'm actually going to install handlebars as a dependency to the project. So handlebars is just a templating engine. There are different ones as well, like Pug, Jade, and embedded JavaScript, which you can use. But as I say, we're not actually going to be making use of those engines. We just need to set something in our app. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically say the app is going to receive a value of views. And we're going to basically set that to a path in our current directory. So we're going to use the path uh, library, which is a built-in node library, and just set it to our current directory and uh, set it to views. So we'll need to import that as a dependency to the project as well. And then we're going to set that view engine to handlebars. Otherwise Express will complain at us. And we're also going to set a public uh, assets directory. So we'll say express.static and we're going to basically serve content from a folder called public. So let's create those folders as well, just so we have them. So we want views and public, not inside public. There we are, they're two separate directories now. And inside the views folder, I'm just going to create one view, uh, which will be called index. And in our public folder, I'm also just going to create one file, which is app.js, which is going to be our front-end application that's going to actually make use of the API. So in our handlebars template, let's actually just create a uh, bit of placeholder text. So we'll say random name generator in a heading level one tag. And we need to add that route to our application. So we've got the forward slash random name, but we actually want to serve up that template that we've just created. So we'll say app.use, for forward slash, and again, 
a request and a response object is used for that. And on the response, we're just going to render the template uh, named index. And Express will work out where that file is because we've set it in our views folder up here. So let's just actually run the app again. And in the browser now, if we just go to forward slash, you can see that heading level one tag is being displayed. Uh, so that's up and running. Let's actually make something a bit more useful in our handlebars template. So I'm just going to take this out for the moment. And let's put in some actual HTML markup. And we'll give it the document title of random name generator. And let's put in that heading level one tag again. And also, uh, we're going to actually put a container that will hold the result. And I'll just give that a class of result. So this is just an empty div at the moment, but the results that come back from the API will be populated into here. And of course, we need a button as well to actually uh, generate a new name. So I'll just call that, uh, give it an ID of generate, and we'll just say get name. And then finally, we're going to load in the front end code that we haven't written yet. And we'll just say app.js. So that will be served up from here from the public assets folder. So let's go into that file now and actually create the function that's going to call the API and load in a random name. And there's just going to be one function inside here. And we'll call that load random name. Again, you can give it any name that you like. And the only thing I'm going to pass into that function is a reference to the place where we actually want to populate the results. So the actual containing element where we're going to put the results from the API into. So I'll pass that in as a parameter so that we can make use of it in this function. And quite simply, all this function is going to do is send that network request and read the response that comes back. So I'm going to use the fetch API for that. And all we need to do is pass it in the actual URL that's going to be called. So we'll say localhost 3001, and then it's forward slash random name. And as you saw, just by requesting that URL in the browser, we get the uh, result for that. So I'm going to use fetches chain here to call the response.json function, which will convert the response that comes back from fetch into an actual JavaScript object. And then with the result of that, we are just going to populate the result div that's been passed in as an argument. And the way I'm going to do that is just set its inner HTML to, and just put that inside a heading level two tag just for some differentiation on the page. And of course we've got result, and we've got on that result object, there's the first name, and also the result dot last name. And let's close the tag. So that function will actually load in the data for us, uh, but we need to trigger that function. And I'm going to write some code in the main template file. We could put this into the app.js as well, but just so it's separated off a little bit and we can see what's going on, I'm going to write it in here. And all I'm going to do is get a reference to the two elements on the page. So the first is the result uh, div, and I'll just use a query selector statement for that. And because it's a class, we'll say dot result. And then the other thing is we need to get a reference to the button as well. And again, I'll use a query selector and that's an ID of generate. And what we want to do is when someone clicks that generate button, we want to call the load random name function. So let's set that up. We'll say on the generate button, let's add an event listener of click. If we can spell it right. And when someone does that, we'll call a function and the function inside that itself will call the load random name function. And of course that function expects us to give us a div so that it knows where to put the output. Um, so I'm just going to, we've got a reference to result div, so I'm just going to pass that in as the argument. So fingers crossed that should be enough to actually get us working. So let's restart the app and go back to our browser. And let's reload that root template. And you can see now our button's appearing. So if we click that, oh, we've got some error going on. That's not working. Let's have a look. 
So it looks like the load random name function can't be found. Let's just check the name of that that we set up in here. So it's load random name in here. And then in the calling script, it's also load random name. Okay, so let's just set the uh, check the app config. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, app.set, we should actually say app.use uh, express.static public folder. So it probably couldn't find the actual uh, front end JavaScript file. Uh, so let's restart the app and go back and refresh the page. Okay, so the console error has gone. And if we click the button now, uh, yeah, that seems to be working now. So yeah, make sure, make sure you use app.use and not app.set for your uh, express.static folder. Okay, so there we pretty much have a working random name generator. Uh, let's just add a little bit of styling. I'm not going to go mad. I'm just going to include a bootstrap uh, for this just so that we can have a little bit of styling on the app. So just directly in the handlebars template in the main index page, I'll load in bootstrap from a CDN and let's put a little bit of markup around our heading and result containers. And let's just do that. So what I will actually do is our button, uh, let's give it a couple of classes, uh, BTN, BTN primary. So that'll give us a nice blue button. And for the result, I'm going to add some classes on there, but I only want to add them once the uh, result from the API has come through. So I'll add another line into our JavaScript code. So for our result div, um, let's actually uh, access its class list. And then I'm going to add a couple of classes. I'm going to add the alert and alert success classes. Let's save that. Let's reload our app one last time and head back to the browser. So now we've got a bit of bootstrap styling, the font's a little bit better. We've got the container layout and the uh, primary button. So let's click that. And you can see that now the uh, data from the H2 tag that's been loaded in from the API uh, is in one of those alerts. So it appears a bit bolder and it looks a bit nicer. So there you have it. That's our complete uh, random name generator full stack app. Uh, if you're watching it and you're thinking it's a bit overkill just for a random name generation process, then you're probably right. Uh, but hopefully you've learned a couple of things on how to actually uh, import some data into your app and then serve it up via an API. Of course, that JSON file could in reality be another data source like a database or something. And we've seen how that process can work of loading in that data and then consuming it via an API that you've created on the front end as well. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. And I'll see you in the next full stack app tutorial.